All right, hi, so today what we're gonna do is mix assembler and C together. We're going to take a C function, uh, a main function, and call an assembler function from it. And we'll use the PIC32 in simulation to show how that's done. All right, so here we go. We are going to start a new project. It's going to be a standalone MPLAB X project. We're going to use a standard PIX 32MX250. We'll just choose the first one right there. We will use the simulator like this. We're going to use XC32 2.40. And I'm going to call this uh, mix C assembler. This is part two of a couple of different parts that I'm doing. We go, so we go finish. Now there's some tricks to setting up the mixture of files to get this to actually work. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to source files right here. We are going to create and right click on here. Here we go. New C main file. This is pretty standard. So uh, let me see. I'm going to call this I'm going to call it main for simple assembler, like that. I'm going to copy and paste in my file just so we can make this a little bit faster. All right, and I'm just going to explain it. So what we've got here is the call to xc.h so that we have the, the board support package, the chip support package for any of the, the PIC chips. After that, I've got the config register is set up. This is particular to this particular uh, PIC32. And, um, and so if I wanted to uh, generate it for another PIC32, I would simply go down to configuration bits down here and I would set it up and then I would say generate source code to output and I would recreate this right here. All right, so um, depending on your, your particular model of the chip. After that, this is where it starts to get interesting. We're going to have an assembler function, okay, being defined in another another file. But in order to get access to it, I have to tell the C compiler that it is external, all right, and I have to set it up in a way, prototype it in a way that the C compiler will be able to go in and and get it. So I treat it basically like a C function. So I say it's found elsewhere. I'll define that soon. It's called the function is going to be called ASM function, and I'm going to pass a variable into it. I'm going to pass a value into it, uh, and that value will be defined here in this C file as my variable. It's going to be an integer. All right. Then after that, I got my main function right here. I probably should have made this int and void, but we'll leave that as it is. Um, from there, I'm going to say that I want digital pins. I set my tri-state to uh, zero, 00 so that we have all of the pins that are relevant on this particular chip, uh, the bottom ones in the 32-bit register set to output. And then I'm going to latch them uh, high, okay, using the latch register. So all eight of those bottom pins are going to be set high. All right, after that, I got the typical while loop down here, all right, and this you would normally find in any sort of C, C++ kind of embedded program. It's an infinite loop, and I'm just going to switch the state of those eight bits, the eight pins, uh, off first, and then on, and that'll make the LEDs turn on and off. But in between that and that, I have the call to the assembler function and I'm passing in a value into it, you can see right here. So I'm calling it like I would call any standard C function, which is kind of nice because I'm gonna basically write a bunch of assembler and it'll, it'll be distinct from this here. And I won't have to use the ASM command to uh, call up any of the assembler operations. I'll write it in standard assembler. All right, so that's that. Next up. I need to create that assembler file. Now it's tricky. You go to new and rather than uh, 
type it, or select an assembler file, so a, a .asm or a dot lowercase s, or even a, a capital S uh, selection, you can't do that. For whatever reason, I don't understand. It's been like that for years um, in MPLAB X. Instead, I go to Other. I go to Other. I go to Empty File. Go figure. I don't know why this is the case, but it works. Next, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it assembler for main.s. The actual name doesn't really matter. What's important is that it ends with a dot capital S. Again, I have no idea why. Why does cap capital S work and not lowercase s or dot asm? I don't know, but it does. All right, so this is a blank file. Now I have already coded this up. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in and I'll explain what that source code is. Hold on, let's try that again. Copy, paste, nope. One more time. Copy, paste, there we go. All right, so uh, I've written the comments in standard C uh, format, okay, so the slash and star or the double slash, which is different than how you would write it in normal assembler, but whatever. Um, for the most part, I'm writing all my code in, in, in C anyway, so I might as well use the standard, well, MPLABX recognizes this kind of uh, commenting style. I put the header file in here just in case it's required. This is again the chip specific definitions the compiler will go out and look for the actual file that actually has the definitions in it. All right, next. We're saying here, I'm going to read this out. So step two is define where in memory this code will go. Flash memory is where we want to store this. Flash memory is that, that memory that uh, allows your program to sit and make, make it available, even if you turn off the microcontroller. So it'll sit in flash memory. All right. And the C compiler refers to flash memory as dot text. It's weird, whatever, it doesn't matter, that's what it is. Uh, GCC will, will recognize it that way. Okay, so dot text. We're saying this is a dot text section. All right, next, tell the assembler not to optimize the code. All right, um, you just want to be careful that it doesn't go in and do things that you're not expecting. Next up, ASM function, where did that come from? It came from here. We have this ASM function that is defined externally. It is a function. All a function is, is basically a label in memory saying, if I get called, go to this place in memory. That's all we're doing. And effectively what we're doing is, is explicitly defining that in the assembler file. All right. So I say that there is an ASM function. This is its label. This is its entry point. Okay. So where it comes in, Okay, and so so when the compiler puts everything together, then it will say, oh, this is the location to go into. This is just the syntax that's required to say this is where the function resides. And then here is the actual label. Okay, it will all get sorted out by the compiler. So we basically said this like three times. There's different tools that come in looking for it. It'll find it. At the end of the day, what's important is that's the function right there. All right. The next step is to define the prologue and epilogue of the function. Now, normally you don't worry about this when you're writing C programs. However, in assembler, if you've got a function, you have to define how things come in and how things exit the function. So here we go. Step four, a function prologue, the start of the function. We do an add immediate unsigned, and we're dealing with the stack pointer here. We're basically moving the stack pointer back four spaces, okay? We're changing the stack value by four bytes. Then what we do is we store the contents of the register S0 onto the new stack address, okay? So we're basically setting this up so we can return. Next, 4B, body of the function, okay? This is actually where so the, the meat and potatoes of the function actually is. In this case, we are going to um, muck around with latch B. We're going to clear it, and we're gonna use a special register called the clear register for uh, 
the port B and it's clear with respect to the latches of port B. So lat B clear. So load S is zero with the address of register latch B clear. Why S is zero? Um, because it's the, the register that we want to be using here. But we have stored S zero in case it was being used elsewhere, okay? So we're now going to store word um, and we're going to use the uh, the, the pointer to S0, um, so put A0 contents into latch B. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right here. All right, so we've stored, sorry, we've stored latch B's address in S0. We're now going to take whatever was in A0 and put it into latch B. Where did A0 come from? A0 was stored as the input variable. Okay, so when you call this function right here, it looks at that that variable, or the value actually in this case, the value, and it stores it in a register called A0. All right, next up. So that will get placed into latch B. Latch B's address was stored in that register. The contents of A0 will go to latch B. Next, we clean things up. So we use the epilogue. We load word. We're going to uh, return the stack, or sort return the value from stack into register S0. Then we do an add immediate. We're going to place the stack back into its original state. So we're going to move the stack. All right. Next, we return to the caller, which is what function called us in the first place. So we're going to jump. We're going to go to the return address, which is found in the RA register. And then there's no operation. This defines the end of the uh, function. All right. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to compile it. Let's test it out. Let's see what happens. All right. I'm going to put a breakpoint right there. We're going to run the simulator. We should get it dropping right there. It is. It's good. Now I'm going to go over to where is port. Port B, where is Port B? Port B is right there. All right, so let's take a look at the IO view, the IO registers, or the registers for Port B. We're going to step, step, watch my latch, latch turns. Okay, now I'm gonna jump over to the ASM function, the assembler function, we're now in it. We're now stepping through, starting at line 49 right here. We do our add, we do our store word, we uh, load um, the, the address for latch B into S0. Then we're going to put the contents of A0 into uh, S, well, into the pointer S0 that's pointing to latch B clear. And uh, let's see, A0, can we actually see that? Let's go take a look. Views, CPU registers. There we go. All right, so there's A0 right there. It's 00FF, so we can see right there. Okay, now it's going to be sent into latch B. All right, so we're gonna go back over here. Let's check it out. All right. Um, now stepping through, we're returning. All right, now we're going to set latch B to zero and back up again. And we're just going to keep going in our loop right there. Okay, so now you see it. We have set up our um, C file to call an assembler function. Done. Mm -hmm.